Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Fantastic Friday. What a blessing and an honor and a privilege it is once again to be able to come into your hearts and come into your homes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Era. Good morning, Mel. Good morning, Sister Ruby. Johnny, good morning. Good morning, Buki. Shirley Tate, good morning. And Denise, good morning. Sister Betty, good morning. What's up, Brother Justin? Good morning, Pam. Shana Boo, good morning. Dolores and Lois and Sharonda, good morning. Pastor Rosemary, good morning. Dominique. Carolyn Fuller, good morning. Alice, good morning. Good morning, Minnie Stewart. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Go ahead and give God some praise this morning allowing you to wake up and see this brand new day, this wonderful opportunity. Good morning, Diva. Dorothy, good morning. Aretha, good morning. I would go ahead and encourage everybody right now to proclaim victory in Jesus. Since God woke you up, you might as well proclaim victory. Amen. Brother Roosevelt and what's up, Kenny Ray and Aunt Jean and Sister Tanya. Yeah, go ahead and share this if you don't mind. Thank you all so much. I see Sister Ruby just shared it, Cousin Jackie. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get it kicked off this morning with prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for another day that you've granted unto us. And we appreciate you, Lord God, for your strong hand of protection. Your guidance, Lord God, is uh, appreciated. And God, we thank you for this fantastic Friday. Whatever comes our way, whatever situation that may arise, Lord God, we are putting our firm faith and our trust in you, knowing that we are the victors, Lord God, and not the victims. You created us, Lord God, to be conquerors and not to be defeated. And thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord God, to, to go through the Gethsemane experience while we pray profusely. We believe by faith that you're going to allow us to atop our situation, to elevate above our problems, Lord God, to be able to win victoriously, Lord God. And we absolutely, uh, unequivocally, Lord God, unapologetically, we proclaim victory on this fantastic Friday, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that the enemy is hot on our tracks. We know, Lord God, that situations, Lord God, are around us and we are feeling the weight of all the burdens, Lord God, that is going on in the earth, sickness and disease and pandemics, Lord God, financial woes, um, a confusion in our marriages and families and our relationships on our jobs, whatever the case may be, Lord God, we are still trusting in you because you are in complete control. You are sovereign. And God, we love you today, Lord God. And we magnify your name, Lord God. And we appreciate you, Lord, this, just this wonderful little talk with you. Because just a little simple conversation, a little convo with you makes everything all right. We love you now, Lord Jesus. And we honor you. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, my heart sings is a song. My heart sings. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Y'all know this song. Go ahead and sing it with me. How can I describe A God that's indescribable How can I explain a love that's unexplainable 
I'm at a loss for words. Anybody ever get speechless? Oh, my heart sings oh. Worship with me. Oh, my heart sings, oh, amen. Sometimes that's all you need to say when you're fighting your battles. Oh, hallelujah. How can I describe, how can we truly describe a God? A God that's indescribable How can I explain A love that's unexplainable I'm at a loss for words Oh, my heart sings, oh, come on, somebody shout, oh, with me, oh, oh, my heart sings, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yes. Come on, bless the Lord with me. My heart sings, oh, hallelujah to your name, oh God. You're so worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun and to the setting of that same sun, you're so worthy and we worship you, oh God. Oh, 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 hallelujah. I can stay there all day. You know I can. Oh, hallelujah. Look, when, whenever you find yourself in a precarious situation, amen, when somebody come up to you and you know that they've got a rough spirit, oh, my hallelujah. I just want to tell you to shout, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. How we bless the Lord this morning. Amen. We're going to shout. We're going to proclaim. To a God that is indescribable, one that is um, um, one that is undefeated, unmoved, unchanged. We're calling on his name this morning. Whatever you've got going on, whatever you got going on in your family, yeah, this coronavirus, we are binding it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are proclaiming that God has given us victory over our children, over our grandchildren, over our wives and our husbands. Over our careers, we are proclaiming victory right now in Jesus' name. No weapon, says Isaiah, formed against us shall be able to prosper. And we're standing on his word, believing his word, trusting in his word. When things begin to pop off in our lives, we're going to pop off the word of the Lord that we can do all things through Jesus Christ, which gives us strength. Somebody need to shout right there for your family. Amen. Somebody need to shout right there. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's get into this word this morning. Amen. We're going to wrap up um, this Survivor Series today. Amen. We're going to wrap it up. And I just thank you all so much for your consistency and your commitment um, for partnering, partnering with the St. Paul Ministry. And we pray that God will continue to bless you immensely. And um, I want to give you this word this morning to help uh, substantiate your day because inevitably you're going to have to face some stormy days. Amen. Amen. It is what it is. Amen. But we have the word of the Lord. We have God on our side um, that will help us to be able to, uh, to have a concrete spirit when everything is beginning to just blow hard our way. Amen. So look, the word of the Lord is coming from Ephesians, the sixth chapter 
everybody that's been on this journey for any length of time should know Ephesians 6. Amen. Ephesians 6, Paul is talking to the church of Ephesus, and he is one that is very affectionate with having to go through some problems and some troubles and some drama and chaos in his life. So he is telling this church this morning, he is saying in, in, in the 10th verse of this said chapter, he says, I got a final word for you, Minnie Stewart. I've got a final word for you, Stephanie Brown and Tanzler and Annie Redmond and John and Tony. I've got a word for you. Hey, Amen. I got a word for you. He is saying, be strong. Yeah, that's for you, Monica from Louisiana. Look, he's saying, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Look, I know, I know that sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it's easier said than done. I get it. I've been there, Pastor Transparent. I've been there. I've done that. It is so much easier said than done. Well, Pastor, um, tell me, how do I need to be strong? How can I rather be strong when I am so weak right now? I've got so much going on in my family. Oh, I forgot to put something on to help us. Write this. Watch this. Yeah, how can I be strong? <laughs> When I feel so fatigued and weak right now, I'm trying my best to hold my family together. Sickness has hit us. Coronavirus has hit us. Death has hit us. Oh, bankruptcy is, is looming. Mm, I don't know who this is for this morning. It has hit us. Anybody been hit this morning? And you feel like, you know what? I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to be strong. I hear you, Pastor Thurman. I hear you. I'm trying my best, and you're holding on by just a string of a hair. Watch this, though. I'm going to give you some help. He says, be strong in the Lord. See, there it is. See, there it is. See, see, if you're operating in your own strength, that's why you're so tired. Oh, my God. If you're trying to do it by yourself, unconsciously, unawarely, many times, we're doing it by ourselves. Oh, hell. Oh, hallelujah. I felt that. I felt that. Look, we're trying to piece together this puzzle and, and, and pieces of our lives are over there and over here and over there and everywhere. And we're trying to piece it together. We're trying to hold it together in our own strength. Look, we're not God. That's why we trust in him. He says, be strong in the Lord. One that is all powerful. Jesus Christ, after he defeated the grave and, and after he defeated death, what did he say? All power is in my hands. Oh, hallelujah. That's why we need to be operating in his strength. That's how we're going to survive today alone. We need to operate in the Lord's strength. He says, not only be strong in the Lord, but also in his what? Mighty power. Yeah, look, look, when, when Jesus Christ took the keys from hell and the grave, he looked at it. He says, where is your strength now? Where is your victory? I've defeated you. <laughs> that's why, that's why we need to put our firm trust in the Lord. Come here, Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Here it is, in your own strength. Oh, hallelujah. In all your ways, you have to acknowledge him and he will orchestrate and guide your steps. Yeah, he says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And here it is, here it is. Let me give you some more, let me give you some more. Verse 11 says this, if you want to be victorious, if you want to win, if you want to survive, this is what you've got to do. Look, and I know, look, I'm about to show you something. These things, this mask right here is uncomfortable. We have to wear these things all day, every day, right? It is part of what CDC is telling us to do. It, it's, it's part of our artillery to fight against the coronavirus. It's not 100% proof, amen, but it does help us, right? Can I get a witness right here? Right. God is telling us to do something in the spiritual. Mm, I'm about to help him, Pastor Tony. God is telling us to do something in the spiritual because we are going to get we are going to get hit by the enemy. It's inevitable. We are living in in his world. Yeah, he is the prince of the power of the air. We're living in his world. Amen. Watch this. He says, put on. Paul is telling us this morning to put on all. Mm. So many of us, and I'm just going to be honest with you, I'm demonstrating. Here on the job, we got some young people. Uh, we got some young people that feel like that, that feel like they are immune, right? And I'm just going to demonstrate, right? They wear this mask. They don't wear they don't wear it right, right? They wear it like this. They wear it like that. 
Sometimes they wear like this. Look, no, 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 no. We've got to wear our, we've got to wear the things that God has told us to put on. We've got to wear it properly. Oh, I'm demonstrating this morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm past the demonstration this morning. He says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Oh my God, I'm helping somebody this morning. Stephanie Brown, am I helping you? Am I helping you? need to go ahead and shout and share right now because somebody is in the fight of their life. Go ahead and shout and share. Watch this. He said, we got to put on all of God's armor if you want to be victorious so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil because he has some schemes. He is a trip, you all. He is, he is notorious for, cre for, for creating drama. He is notorious. Look, the devil, uh, the devil does not care what age, how old. He does not care if you got money, if you are broke. He does not care about any of us. And I, you know, and I question, I question even in my life why I was on his side at times. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why I got caught up in the vice grips of, of Satan's claws. Look, I, I thank God for pulling me out of that stuff, right? Now, I clearly understand the premise of the enemy. He wants to destroy us. Come here, John. Come here, John 10. I believe verse 10. It says, watch this. God, God tells us to do something. And I believe that if we do this, I believe, watch this. The thief comes, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the word of the Lord right there. He, he has no regard for you, your family, your grandchildren, and nobody. He is trying to take all of us out. Understand that. Understand that. And when we, are, and when we get on his side, we are giving him more power. Mm, Jesus Christ. Y'all need, need to share this with some of y'all, your family and your, and your friends that you know that are in some jacked up situations. Right? Because the more we give him uh, our attention, the more powerful he gets. But watch this. We need to put... Us, the Christians, the people of God, oh my God, that's on the front lines of this, this, this spiritual battle. He says, we need to stand firm by putting on all of God's armor, right? Because watch this, we are not, Paul says to this church, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We're not. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. This, this, this enemy that we are fighting, just like the coronavirus, it is invisible. Mm, my, 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 my. We're fighting against a devil that is unseen. Now, he operates in people that don't have a regard for him. He operates in unsaved folks. We see, we see him rise up in, in unsaved folks. We see him, right? But we're not fighting. We're not fighting um, people. We're fighting the spirit behind the folks. Oh, hallelujah. And we got an antidote for that too. He says, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. But we're fighting against evil rulers, evil rulers with an S, evil rulers and authorities with an S of the unseen world against mighty powers, mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Look, Job is one that you all know his story. You all know his his he had a real life situation and he was just doing his own thing taking care of his family, getting up every day, praying over his children, right? He said, God, if my, my sons and my daughters, you know, did anything, if they've sinned against you, God, I, please forgive them, right? He is one that, that loved the Lord, one that, that, that trusted in God, and God blessed him because of his obedience. But like I told you guys yesterday, it does not matter how obedient you are, how rich you are, uh, how wealthy you may may be and how you've accumulated a whole lot of stuff and even how uh, how saintly you are, the devil will still find you. Mm. Watch this. He said, that's why we've got to put on all of this. Put on all of what? Put on all of what? Here it is. Because I understand you're not fighting your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your boss. You're not fighting any of those. You're fighting spirits. Therefore, here's a word. Here's a, here, here's a conjunction. Verse 13. Therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor, not your armor. See, so many of us want to use our pink tornado as, as a weapon against somebody else. Yeah, our pink tornado, this tongue uh, is an unruly evil, full, as James says, full of deadly poison itself. Right? So if we're trying to fight fire with fire, it's not going to work. <laughs> Can I get a witness, Pastor? You got it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We can't fight fire with fire. 
right? We've got to fight fire. We've got to fight the fires of this world uh, with the word of the Lord. Yeah. Therefore, we got to put on every piece of God's armor, not your armor, not your switchblade. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and folks, look, and there's some, hey, there's some body of Christ that know how to use that switchblade, Pastor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Y'all know how to use that switchblade. You look, put that thing down. It could, <laughs> Jesus told Peter, oh, Peter, <laughs> if you live by that thing, you're going to die by it. So put it up. Put it up. Right? Watch this. Amen. He says, you don't need to be fighting with your armor. You need to be fighting with God's armor. So you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that, there's the word right there. The, then, then once you put on his whole armor, once you put it on, he says, then after the battle, because I'm going to tell y'all something. Oh, my gosh. There are many times, there are many times that, that I go home and I'm just, just mentally drained, right? mentally drained, just, just spiritually depleted because I poured out everything that I possibly can, right? Uh, God has allowed me to be able to manage a, 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 a beautiful group of people uh, here on my job. Um, and, and it gets crazy at times. And I know that many of you know, it gets crazy at times, right? But watch this. Watch this. You, you've got to learn that after you um, 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 fill yourself up and you're depleted now, You've got to make sure that you get back in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Get back in his get back in his presence and fill yourself back up. Right. Because I'm telling you, life has a way of draining you. Right. He said you've got to put on God's armor because then after you're able to stand, after you fought that battle, after you was able to win that war on your job. He says after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Oh, my God. That's a word for somebody this morning. You'll still be standing firm. And then he says right here, verse 14, stand your ground. Oh, that's a word for that. <laughs> stand your ground. Stand your ground. Look, that doesn't mean that you have to stand, you know, toe to toe uh, with, with your enemy all the time. You just need to just stand your ground. Paul said in another passage of scripture, he says, when you have done all to stand, stand again. That's the word right there. Stand your ground. And this is how you stand your ground, right? You stand your ground by putting on the belt of truth. John 8 and 32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He says, put on the belt of truth because there's going to be many lies that are being thrown at you. The devil is going to throw darts of lies and, and darts of deceit and, and darts of darkness. He's going to be throwing darts at you, darts of sickness. He's going to be throwing all type of darts at you. He says, but you got to put on the belt of truth. And then he said, put on the body armor of God's righteousness. Put your righteousness on. Yeah, put it on before you leave the house. Put it on, right? He's, then he says, he says, put on your shoes. Put on the peace um, that comes from the good news that you would be fully prepared. Yeah, you got to get the good news. The good news in the Greek is a word called euangelion. Yeah, that's the, that's the good news. Good news that Jesus Christ is alive, right? Yeah, put on, put on your shoes, put on your peace that comes from the good news. And then in addition to all of these, he says, hold up the shield of faith. Look, in addition to all of that, hold up the shield. Yeah, put on your shield of faith. Yeah, because the devil is going to try to throw all types of doubts in your mind. Oh, God is not for me. God is not with me. He's forgotten all about your diva. He's forgotten all about your Zenoria. He's forgotten all about you, uh, Melanie. Yeah, you got to put on your shield of faith. Yeah, put put hold that hold that shield up. Yeah, hold that shield up like Captain America on the Avengers. I love that series. Hold up your shield. Amen. Watch this because when you hold up your shield, the devil, you will stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Because think about it, if you leave your house without putting on this full armor, think about how many times you get hit. And then how many how many times still come out of your mouth that shouldn't come out of your mouth? Oh, it, you, know, you know what? It meant to, you did meant to say that because out of the abundance out of your heart, the Bible says your mouth gonna talk. <laughs> it was this. He says, put it on. He says, put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord. Now that's the real switchblade right there, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's how you cut the devil. That's how you slice him up, right? By, by being godly, 
Many times, many times, Jesus Christ, many times, Jesus Christ, uh, when he was uh, going through his most grueling moment, he didn't say a mumbling word. He took a lot of stuff. I hear my father-in-law, I hear him this morning, amen, he talked to me about three or four times yesterday. Amen, I appreciate my, I appreciate my family. And I appreciate, I appreciate having warriors on your side. I appreciate uh, people that, that are lifting you up and encouraging you, right? Because watch this, we, we are all in this thing together and we all need to embrace one another. Because if you are down, I need to be lifting you up. And if I'm down, hallelujah, I need somebody to help lift me up. I need you and you need me. We all are in Christ's body. He says, stand your ground, son. And many times standing your ground is being just like Jesus Christ and not even saying a mumbling word. And let God fight your battle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is he not, is he not one that is able is he not one that is victorious? Is he not one that will be right there when you need him most? He says, watch this. He says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times. On, e on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And then I love this. I love, I love Paul's. Uh, I love Paul, what he said in verse 19. He says, watch this. He said, pray for me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, I need the eight or six of you guys that when you think about Pastor Thurman and, and Pastor Tony, yeah, pr pray for us. <laughs> pray for us. He said, pray for me too. He says, watch this, I love this. He said, ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and the Gentiles alike. He says, watch this. He said, Paul says, I'm in chains. I'm in chains right now. I'm locked up for preaching the good news. And many times I know that you feel like you're locked up and you're bound and you're in fetters and chains. He said, I'm in chains. But guess what? Hallelujah. I feel the presence now. He said, I'm still going to preach. Mm. He said, I'm in bondage in an uncomfortable place. But brother said, I'm still going to preach. I'm still going to serve him. I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to honor God. Even though the zigzag lightning may flash. And even though the boisterous thunder may roar. Even though coronavirus may hit my family. Even though even though uh, things are jacked up. Even though high blood pressure may be permeating in your body. Even though you've got some things that are that is going on. Somebody need to say, I'm still going to proclaim the good news of the Lord. I'm still going to sing. The, I'm still going to sing his songs. I'm not going to allow the devil to stop me. I'm not going to allow the devil to, to thwart God's purpose in my life. He said, I'm still going to preach. I'm still going to teach. I'm still going to worship. He, because God is my ambassador, as Paul says. So I, he says, so pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him. That's the word of the Lord right there. As I should. Amen. That's a word for me right there. He, pray that, that, that I still learn how to adjust Oh, God, to the vicissitudes of life. Oh, bless the Lord. I pray that you receive this word this morning. Is this helping anybody? I pray that this devotion has helped somebody to survive the rigor of life. Help you survive when things go and start going crazy in your family, in your church family. Help you to survive. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody need to shout hallelujah right there. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, Tanzala said, I'm still going to worship. Yeah. Shana Boo said, yeah pray, yeah, pray for our Fasia family. Yeah. Still going to praise the Lord, says Mel. Ruby Robbie said, I'm still. Oh, holly, I see you. Yeah. So the pastor said, I love the Lord. So I just thank the Lord for your testimony this morning. I thank the Lord. Go ahead and give your testimony that you're still going to hold up the bloodstained banner of the Lord and proclaim that God is still victorious. He is still alive. He's still well. And we're going to magnify him and glorify him because he's a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all of what we can ask, imagine, or even think. So on this fantastic Friday, oh, we want to just praise and worship the Lord that he's allowed us to, to, to survive this week. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look, Father God, we thank you so much for this devotion. We receive it by faith. We're going to walk in your victory. We're going to stand firm. Well, God, we're going to put on the whole armor. God, we're going to just stand before uh, the shearer just like a lamb. We're going to stand before him, Lord God, and just allow you to give us 
God, the stamina to just look at you and look at that situation and know, Lord God, that we're going to come out on top. We so love you, we honor you, and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody need to shout and share. Somebody need to shout and share. Amen. Pastor Chris said, amen. So look, I just want to um, remind everybody that next week, next week we will not have our devotion. I am taking, um, taking a week off. The pullback is for the comeback. Amen. So the following week we'll come back and uh, reconvene. I pray God's blessings over you, um, that you guys will be safe during your uh, 4th of July. Uh, whatever you're going to do, please be safe. And until then, if it be the Lord's will, we'll connect for sure on Sunday morning. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, fantastic Friday in Jesus' name.